So today we are here with Lucy Challen, who is the Apprenticeship Coordinator at the University of Chichester. And she's here to talk us through degree apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships that the university offers, because there are many of them, and you know, thoughts behind apprenticeships for our year 12 students currently, considering what their future looks like. Thank you very much, Lucy, for talking to us today. No can you problem. tell us can you tell us a little bit more about your role to start with yeah of course so um i work um in the team with the apprenticeship manager so holly hart um and she deals with kind of the employer side of things so she actually go out to companies and try and kind of get them involved in degree apprenticeships um, whereas I specifically deal with the apprentice side. So I deal with trying to get students in roles. Um, if companies do want to recruit for an apprenti apprentice, then that's something that I'll deal with. So I I'm kind of the contact for all students, um, whereas Holly kind of deals with the companies and, the, and employ employers. Okay. So what? how would you explain what a degree apprenticeship is? So a degree apprenticeship is um, a full time job, um, but one day a week um, or it can be kind of um, a block study as well. So it could be a week within four weeks. You'd be in university studying. So you would earn a salary um, and you'd get paid within a company. Um, but it would just mean that you're studying kind of one day a week at university. OK. Um, what kind of degree apprenticeships do you offer at Chichester University? So we've got quite a few at the university and they are kind of building next year and the year after. So we will be adding constantly to the ones that we've got at the moment. But we have kind of the business side um, subjects. So we've got chartered management um, and we've got senior leader. But the senior leader one is a kind of an extension to the chartered manager. Um, and then we've got kind of your digital and technology subjects. So we've got software engineering, which kind of focuses on programming and um, all things to do with computers. Um, and then we've got a digital marketer degree apprenticeship, um, which is really good for ad advertisement. And um, we've got a social worker degree apprenticeship as well. Um, and a teaching apprenticeship, but again, that would be kind of a postgraduate so that would be after you've studied at university okay. um, and then we also have um, our engineering apprenticeships so like manufacturing and electrical so if you're really interested in that kind of side of things then well we've got plenty on offer um, in engineering and I'm guessing that all of these apprenticeships are within local businesses yeah, so most of them are. We do have a few companies who are actually located in, for example, Bath and London. Um, so as long as the apprentice is willing to kind of come down to the university um, and study for that one day a week, then we have no problems where the company would be. Um, so if you kind of think that, oh, I really, really like the sound of that company, but it seems a bit far away, that's fine. As long as you're willing to come down for that one day a week, um, then we can kind of meet with them, go through what we'd expect from a company, what we'd expect from an apprentice. Um, and there's ways we can kind of work around the distance. And um, we have offered accommodation for the night before uh, for some companies if, you're, if it's a bit of a longer drive for that morning. So you can actually stay overnight for the day before you're due to go into university. Do you feel that the apprentices get the same experience of university life as university students do? I, I didn't to begin with when I first started in the kind of area, but actually looking at the apprentice apprentices now and seeing how much they're thriving in in the position as a student um, it's definitely um, close to the full-time student experience so they do have things for example like student support um, student well-being services um, and then you've got all your kind of societies and clubs so um, a lot of them are involved in the sports club still so that's obviously not not something that would be 
it wouldn't be for apprentice, uh, apprentices you could still do that because you're a student at the university mm -hmm. um, and then they've got their own kind of degree apprenticeship society as well so they've actually to mix with all the apprentices because they're working within different companies they've made their own kind of club um, and they go out and have socials and um, meet up and it's it's a really good experience for them and that you definitely don't miss out on kind of a student life um, as it were um, if you were a degree apprenticeship so how many how many degree apprentices do you currently have at the university so we have just under 200 so it's 198 i think it was um currently studying um obviously that will kind of go up and down depending on who, who we get this year um but we have got um, very good numbers for this year actually so they are looking to hopefully extend some courses um, for next year and add a, add a few more. So how many how many placements or places rather do organisations generally offer to apprentices is it one is it two is it more? It's usually one or two um, we do, um, for example, have links with Rolls Royce who will take on about five a year. Um, so it complete, obviously they're a bigger company, so it depends on, on the company. Um, but usually it is one or two. Um, and basically what I'll do, if, if the company comes to me wanting these apprentices, um, I always put it on the Find an Apprenticeship website, which is a gov.uk website. Um, and all of the apprenticeships will be kind of on offer there for, and available for you to kind of apply for. Um, it will either go through to the company website to apply for them or it will come straight through to me and then I will send it on to that company. Okay. So um, yeah, but it's usually one or two. And then what does your process of application look like? So basically if it goes through the Find an Apprenticeship website, so some companies do kind of know which kind of apprentice they want already which is fine um, that will just come straight to us and we're we'll start the application process if you're actually applying for an apprenticeship um, it will come through to me your application form um, and then what i'll do i'll send them all, all the applications on to the company um, the contact that i have and what they do is they're shortlist the applications um, and they're usually put around I'd say about 10 or 12 people through to an interview um, and then they're obviously um, let us know who who's got the job um, the apprenticeship um, and then we start the application process from there so in terms of the interview application process we have little to do with that okay. um, other than other than passing the applications on to the, the company okay so it's predominantly done so it can be different from one organization to the other yeah Mm -hmm. And how many how many applications do you tend to get through for you know one apprenticeship? So for one apprenticeship, I'd say usually about it, it's definitely increased this year. So it's usually about 40, 35 to forty applications. Okay. Um, and I think we're we're hopefully growing and increasing uh, the amount of companies involved with apprenticeship. So. Um, we we'll have more on offer next year. However, I think this year a lot more students are aware of degree apprenticeships, so they are applying. So um, hopefully we we'll have more on offer next year. But it's it's usually around thirty five to forty this year that we we've, we've seen seen apply for kind of each apprenticeship. Okay, what would you say, Lucy? Organisations are looking for when they're looking to shortlist. You know good people to then maybe recruit so within an application they do as an apprenticeship kind of all of our apprenticeships at the university we do ask for um, a GCSE um, grade C in English and maths um, or kind of a level three qualification as well so um, like A levels or a VTEC um, as long as you state that in that application perfect because I know some people forget to put kind of their um, level three qualification in on the application um, and that's something that they really look for um, also within the application if you make it kind of short and simple that that's 
that's what they like. Uh, there are a few kind of really long applications that we get that of people that kind of go off on a tangent when they're trying to explain what their hobbies are or trying to explain why they want the, the apprenticeship. As long as you make it short, simple and easy for them to read and engaging, um, they're more likely to put you straight through to an interview because they ask you a question, they just want an answer really. Like, and as long as it's enthusiastic and engaging, they're, they're more likely to kind of choose you for the role. And I mean, when they've got 40 or so applications to go through, they just, they just want to know an answer, really. <laughs> what kind of student do you think is suitable to do a degree apprenticeship? Because, you know, when I talk to students who have left us and they've gone on to do degree apprenticeships, you know, they have to fit the working for the organisation in with the studying. Time management is quite key. What kind of students do you see and do you think organisations are looking for to do a degree apprenticeship? The main two kind of skills that you need is you need to be quite confident. So, um, um, working within a conflict um, also when you're going into university you need to be kind of good at socializing as well because you'll have many people on the course um, who work with different companies who you don't know um, but you're actually going to see them every week um, to study with so as long as you're good at socializing um, maybe getting feedback from them because they're working in a different company so they have different ideas um, and then kind of taking their ideas into your kind of workplace is brilliant. Um, and we've seen kind of quite a few people do that as well. Um, so I think kind of the main skills that you need are, are confidence to kind of go straight out in the workplace. Um, you need to have kind of um, a sense of prof professionalism. So obviously you're going into a job, so they expect you to be on time. Um, they expect you to wear the correct uniform. Um, just kind of simple things like that um, but at the end of the day you're working for that company and they're paying you um, they're also paying for your apprenticeship so um, obviously you you kind of need to be as professional as possible really mm -hmm. towards them um, but I mean any any student can do it um, doing a degree a degree apprenticeship but if you feel that you maybe need a little bit more more help with your study then maybe a full-time course would be better for you so it depends everyone's different and it depends where you are you're, where you're at kind of with your with your studying so what kind because this will be of interest to many students what kind of salaries are offered by organizations offering degree apprenticeships so within the university we don't really accept any company that's going to offer under 16,000 a year okay. um, so usually we see between 16,000 and 22,000 a year for your kind of first year um, that, that can obviously rise as you go along um, and especially when you actually graduate um, and get your apprenticeship um, that, that salary usually increases quite a lot and do you see apprentices staying within organisations once they've finished their apprenticeship? You know, what does that look like post course? Yeah, so um, at the moment, we've actually only had one person leave the company that they're, they're actually with. Wow. So at the moment, it's, it is going pretty well with um, retention and them staying within the company. So usually the company obviously is putting you through the apprenticeship so they they want to take care of you and progress with you um, as much as they can so we have seen a lot of apprentices just carry on and stay within that company um, and I know certainly some of them have gone into management roles within their companies as well um, so don't think that you're just going to go in and be a dog's body because that isn't what what an apprenticeship's about and they're actually looking to mold someone into their way of working um, whilst getting the qualification with it because they want people to go into those management roles. Brilliant. That's a great place to end. But I was wondering if you've got any other, you know, 
things for students to think about who are kind of, you know, considering university, apprenticeship. The great thing is that they can apply for both. But have you got any other yeah. tips for our students, Lucy? Well, I'm obviously not going to say that one's better um, than the other. So if you do feel like you need more kind of help with studying, then I would say maybe go for the full time course at university. Um, but degree apprenticeships, you have one kind of step in the door straight away. So you obviously have that job. And I know a lot of people are quite scared and worried about trying to find a job after they finish university or after they finish kind of their studies at sixth form or college. Um, whereas with degree apprenticeships, you're, you're already there. It, you're one step closer and you don't need to kind of worry about kind of getting something after you're studying because you're doing it within that job in within that job um also degree apprenticeships you're you're getting a degree at the end of it so it, it's fantastic i mean it makes you look more kind of professional when you're applying for other jobs if you were to look for another job um so i just think it's a really good way of kind of getting yourself out there and um it's a really good kind of future opportunity um and i think a lot lot of people who are older wish that they had that opportunity when they were younger so i definitely apply for a couple but like you say you can apply for full-time courses as well if that's what you want to do thank you so much lucy everything that you've said there is just perfect and will really support our students in their decision making so thank you very much that's no problem at all. If, if any of the students do have um, questions, then feel free to email us. It is, I'll send it across anyway, but it's apprenticeship at chai.ac.uk. So um, I look at that email inbox all the time. So feel free to kind of ask any questions and I'll just send you a response back. Thank you very much, Lucy. No problem.